Okay, so we have time for uh, for one warm up uh, story before I start. Um, and uh, this was a story that I was I was actually at someone's home, uh, and they were celebrating their 42nd anniversary uh, here in Naples. And uh, it just seemed like the happiest couple. Uh, and uh, uh, one guy we went up to the husband and he says, ah, he says just how, how is it that you've, you know, 42 years, you, you both seem so happy and love and content. He says, how do you do it? He says, well, we, we, just do, we just do loving things for each other. He says, well, give me an example. He says, well, he says, we, we go out to a fine dining restaurant uh, twice a week, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I go on Tuesdays <laughs> and on Thursdays. Okay. Uh, well, with that little story, we'll get started. Uh, my name is Mitch Breyer, and I uh, uh, I am the expert uh, here in our Naples Mugs group on iOS, one of the experts on iOS, uh, iPhone, iPad devices. And that means I know just a little bit more than most people here. Um, and uh, the reason I am dressed like this rather than casually and nice like you all is that my real profession is a, as a financial professional with Merrill Lynch downtown Naples and soon to be in Mercado where I help people manage their money. So this iOS iPhone, a lot of people say, well, why do you do this? Uh, how come you know so much about it? Uh, you know, everybody has their passion, and I just, I like this stuff. And I, and I get a great deal of satisfaction, just like I do with my job, and helping people with their money. I, I get a great deal of satisfaction helping people with their iPhones, their iPads particularly, and some other computer things. Uh, and just like some people enjoy if their passion is golf, or tennis, or politics, or uh, whatever it might be. Uh, and I have other things that I'm active in, but uh, certainly the iPhone and the iPad, uh, and my wife will attest to that, uh, are great passions as well. So, uh, I want to start by, again, for those who came in late, you might want to take a picture of this screen. I have some important links. If you need to get a hold of me for any reason, any question after the session, uh, don't take offense at my email, but jump for Mitch at email. Uh, will get to me, and I'll, I will respond to any questions that you send me. The second link is a link to the manual, the official manual, which is a couple hundred to 300 pages, uh, on the Apple site for the iPad. Uh, number three, if you Google uh, Get to Know iOS 7 Mac World, there's a whole series of articles on the new operating system on, on the iPhone and how to use some of these things I'm going to talk about today. And finally is our club uh, at NaplesMugs.com, and I'm going to talk about that right now. Actually, the name of the club is the uh, 10 Mugs Group, which stands for Naples. Mac user group, I put it, Naples Apple Club, but uh, that's not the official name. The club uh, is, uh, there are applications over on the table, they, I think there's a few left over there, maybe not. If there's not, if you email me, or if you go to that website, uh, naplesmug.com, there's a link to the application. Uh, and you can join the club, it's, uh, it'll set you back quite a bit, it's $20 a month, I mean a, a year, uh, and $25 a year for a family membership. The meetings are every Wednesday, 95% of the time at 11.30 at the library on Central Downtown. They have a conference room that's about half this size. Uh, and uh, it is open to the public. You don't have to be a member to attend. You can come in and try a few sessions out as many as you want. Uh, Wednesday, generally at 11.30. The first Wednesday of the month is usually a Q&A session. 
that's run by our president, uh, Jerry King, uh, most of the time. And the way those sessions run is he gets a group about this size in season, and he says, okay, who has a question about a computer, about their Mac, about how to, how to send photos or whatever, and he gets some questions up on the board, and, and about 98% of the time, you will get your answers right in that meeting. Uh, the second uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of the month is on iOS, iPhone, iPad, and I usually coordinate those meetings. The third is again a Q&A session uh, with Gary usually heading those up. And George Rubin, who's here in the black, has been helping me today. Uh, does the fourth Wednesday meeting, which is on iLife, items, iPhoto, and so on. Uh, and if there's a fifth uh, meeting, uh, fifth Wednesday in the month, we usually have a guest speaker that we will videotape and post those videotapes on our website. Uh, in addition to that, the third Monday of every month at 5 o'clock, uh, till about uh, uh, 6.30, we have a uh, meeting that uh, is usually a guest speaker or is podcasted in by someone. Uh, this next Monday, who do we have, George? Jeff Board. Jeff Board, uh, who is a writer for Macworld, will be talking uh, to the group uh, for that Monday uh, meeting at 5 o'clock. Jeff, Jeff's going to cover Mavericks. Mavericks. Mavericks is the operating system for a uh, Mac computer. So, um, that's a little bit about the club. The other, uh, I want to mention a couple other benefits of the club. One is that if you're a club member, uh, you can participate on our private uh, board, discussion board, which is on Yahoo. Uh, and you can post questions and you will get answers to your questions and, and uh, so, uh, well, you can respond if you know the answer. Um, and one of the, uh, the one of the other big benefits is the club has five memberships to uh, a service called Linda.com. Linda.com is an educational uh, uh, service that has thousands of videos on how to do things with computers. Uh, so they have all kinds of videos on on Windows, on on uh, Apple computers, on iPads, iPhones, uh, just about anything you can think of. And those uh, memberships are individually about $350 a year. The club has five memberships. When you join, you email George and say, I want to sign up for a week. It's free. And then you can uh, do your courses and you can sign up for another week if it's available and so on. And the final thing I want to mention about the club is uh, we do run courses each year, about 10 of them, at Hodges University. Um, and those start in January and go through the middle of March. They are $10 for a three-hour course. Uh, I know we usually have two courses on the operating system for the computer, which would be Mavericks. Uh, I just got informed today by George that we're going to have four courses, four on iPad, iPhone related items this year. Uh, we usually have some on iPhoto, uh, pages, and, and so on. Uh, you can only attend those courses for $10 per course if you are a member. So any questions on the club before I move on? Okay, great. Well, I'm glad to have such a great turnout today. Okay, so as I mentioned, these are the important links uh, that I have posted. I want to spend just a minute, I'm going to get out my trusty pointer. <clears throat> to go over the features of these, a couple key features of an iPad, it would be the same for an iPhone. The big feature I want to go over is the home button. Because I'm going to mention, you go to the home button, you go to the home button, and the home button is that indented button at the bottom of your phone or your iPad. That's the home button. Okay? 
Everybody, any questions on that? Or where that is right now? No, don't see it. We don't see it on your device. <coughs> Who's that? Raise your hand. I found it. Okay, you got it. Good. Right there in the den. That's the home button. Uh, these are icons of various applications. Um, and uh, here's your FaceTime camera. We're not going to talk about that today. The real thing I want you to know is this, about this home button. Now, the other thing I want you to know is about, the, this is the back of the iPad, same for an iPhone. And the big thing I want you to know about is right up here, there's a small button that sticks out a little bit, and that's the uh, sleep-wake button. I'll refer to that too. Okay, so that's where if you hold that on, if you hold it down, it'll uh, turn off your iPad, and you'll see a, it'll it'll go on your screen slide here to turn it off. That button. There's a couple other things on here. Uh, uh, on an iPhone, there's a flash right up in here. Uh, but you know your camera's here, the volume buttons are on the side. There's a switch right over here, a little switch that uh, we'll talk about. And the connector to charge on the new one, the small connector is right down here on this one. Any questions on, on those items? Okay. Good. Um, okay, so I want to, that was a quick introduction. I want to spend some, just a second to, uh, to get to know the audience. So, how many people here do not have an iPhone or an iPad? Okay, one person. Oh, Johnny! Well, you've got your wife, so what? Uh, uh, with you, so you don't need one. <laughs> All right. Um, and how many people have, have uh, had their device for um, over a year? Okay. Let's say everybody. How many people are having difficulty with? Uh, <laughs> how many people? How many people are, have just gotten the device? Uh, their first device in the last twelve months. Okay, so some new people, okay. And um, how many people have any trouble with iOS 7, the operating system? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you. Okay, well, iOS 7, and that's what we're going to talk about here today, is the new operating system for the iPad and for the uh, iPhone. And uh, you might have uh, you might have iOS 6. If you do, many of the things that I talk about today will apply to you as well. But you really should update to iOS 7. How many people here have not updated to iOS 7? Okay, quite a few. Okay. Um, what, if you don't know, I'm going to show you that. I'll show you where you can figure that out. Uh, Okay, well, what I will tell you is if you have not updated, it's safe to update. The software is not buggy. Uh, uh, it's by and large uh, pretty well cleared up. And so uh, you can update at any time. And I want to mention what you need to do uh, to update to iOS 7. Uh, first, you need to back up your system either on your computer or in the cloud. And I'll be talking about backups later. But you should do a final backup just in case something goes awry. After you've done that, you need to make sure you're in a Wi-Fi environment, which you probably have at home. And you must be plugged into your charger if you have less than a 50% battery charge. The update takes uh, 30 to 60 minutes. It can take longer to restore all of your apps if you have a lot of them, like I have a couple hundred. Um, 
So, any questions on, and then what I would tell you is if you're hesitant, well, I don't know, I don't have Wi-Fi, go to the Apple store, make an appointment at the Genius Bar, or go in and tell them, look, I'm new to this, and I need to upgrade to iOS 7, and I need some help, and they will help you. <coughs> they will help you. Any questions on that? Okay. So, um, iOS 7 was a substantial update. It was, it was, a, it was a large update, and uh, when I first saw it, I had a developer copy of the update that I, had been, I was working with from July until it was released to the public in uh, October. Uh, and what I want to tell you is when I first saw it, I thought, oh boy. This is going to take some, some people in our group, it's going to take them a while to get used to this. But after I worked with it for a couple days, I thought, you know, there are a lot of great things here. And after I worked with it for a few weeks, um, I concluded, as, as most people have, that it's a fantastic update. There's a lot of great features. There's a lot of new consistency that wasn't there before. And, um, and I like it quite a bit. Uh, and I think most people do. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Particularly, um, a lot of people have trouble with uh, visibility type issues, is what I'm going to say, because they make the, the font smaller or they're thinner. Uh, they put some things in that uh, um, just made it a little more difficult to read. And I'm going to go over some things that will help you adjust that uh, so that it's a little more uh, readable for you. And I'm going to do that right now. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is my home screen. Um, and I'm going to go to the settings area. This and it might be somewhere else on your device, but it looks like a stone burner. Some of these things that they came up with when they changed the icons, they just, it, to me, it doesn't make cosmetic sense at all. This stove burner is one of them for settings. The other one is for Safari, the internet. Well, that looks like a compass to me. I don't know about you. Um, but anyhow, this is... Uh, actually, this is my home page. This is the settings, and that's where we're going to go. So I'm going to touch on settings. Now... Uh, if, if you have iOS 6, uh, all these things are basically the same, it's just that they look different. They're different colors, they went with the, uh, different colors, but they basically kept the items the same. There are some things that operate a little differently, but you'll be able to recognize this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to this general area. Okay? So I'm going to tap on that. And we're actually in that already. And I want to get to that uh, lady in the blue dresses question about what version you have. I'll deviate for just a second. If you go to about, okay, it tells all about your device. And one of the things that it, it's got the name, if I click there, I can change the name of the device to whatever name I want. Um, my device happens to be a cellular device as well, that is, I can operate it anywhere, and it's on the Verizon network. Um, tells us a lot of other things. I have, uh, uh, oh, I don't have any songs on here, because I usually do those on my phone, but I have 14,000 photos on here. Uh, yeah. I have 16 videos. Videos take up a lot of room. Movies take up a lot of room. Um, applications. I mentioned that I have a lot. I have 242 on my device. I probably use about 15 or 20. Uh, the others I, I rarely use, and that's, that's typical. Um, the capacity. I, I have the, the largest one you can get. This is a new iPad, the 120 gig iPad. And with the operating system in there that, that leaves 100, 
115 gigs available, and I have uh, 21 gigs that are empty. So this is, this thing's not full, but it's uh, it's pretty full. Cool. Now, to the version of iOS that you have, it's right here, version 7.0.3, and that is the current version. Everybody see that? Okay, then you need to update. I'm going to show you where that'll, that'll be. Okay, so it gives you a couple other things. If you ever call Apple, and they'll walk you through this, but one of the first things they'll say is, well, uh, uh, what's your model number and serial number? And it's right here. So it makes sense. You're in general, and when you go out of here, you're in about, which makes sense. Okay? Now, if you need to upgrade to a new version of iOS 7 or from iOS 6 to iOS 7, you will probably see a number right here. You'll probably see a number here, a number 1. And you'll probably see a number 1 up here. You don't see it online because mine's up to date. But if I hit software updates, it'll come up. Oops, it wants me to log into the library, so I will. Okay. It comes up and it says, yep, uh, you're up to date. That's the latest version. Yes. That 702, uh, I think the iPhone is, is actually on uh, 7.03 as well. Look. Well, it, it doesn't matter if you just bought it, because if you just bought it, it has whatever it, it came with out of the box. Um, and, hold on, that they want to keep on walking along with the library. Okay. It is 7.0.3 on the, uh, so you would need to do an update. If you, if you go on to yours and you go into this area, it's going to say that there's an update available. Okay? And you don't want to do it right now because it'll take a while. Uh, questions on that? There were some other questions. Yes, ma'am. Does this in any way affect your contract? No, it doesn't affect your contract with your phone company or anything. And in general, you want to be on the latest version. I mean, when they first announced, the only exception to that would be, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is that when they first come out with the new one from 6 to 7, you might want to wait three or four weeks because there's always some bumps on the clear up. But now, they've already had three little small upgrades to what was initially released a month ago. And like I say, I, there's not many bugs left, although there'll be some upgrades coming out, I assume, in the next three or four weeks. Yes, ma'am? I'm trying to get the software updates. I've got about, got names, photos, videos, photos, applications. How do I get to the updates? Okay. Again, you, where you want to go is, you're in this about area, you want to go to this software updates area. Uh, you got to go back. You got it? Okay, good. More questions about that? It's an easy group. The group I talked to last week beat me to death. Okay. It's early. It's early. That's right, it's early. Okay, so now I, I, I got off track because I wanted to ask, uh, get to that lady's uh, question. But I want to go into this accessibility area. So I'm in the general, in the settings, the general area, and the next thing I want to do is go into this accessibility area, which will help you with reading items. And I want to go right into this, um, oops, I'm going to go right into this, um, a couple areas here. Uh, right into this area here. Now, uh, larger text. A lot
lot of people here are going to want to turn that on. Okay? Well, yeah, they come off. They, they, they come all off. And that's the problem for a lot of people. So if you go to this larger text area, I'm going to touch on that. Okay? How did I get there? Okay, let's go back. Okay, I'm going to go back out here. Here's the general. Are you there? You're it? You see the general? Okay. Now you go and you touch on this accessibility. Okay? Touch on that. Are you all with me now? Okay. Now, this large text. You want to touch on that. Or large type. And there'll be a bar here with you can hardly see it. There's a you'll be able to see it on your device. There's a um, a circle here. And you you take and drag that circle. So I'm gonna put my finger on it. And if I move it, see it's getting smaller. Now if I move it this way, it'll get bigger. Okay? Everybody see that? Now, some people, like George over here, has his set about right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, what works good is right about, right about there. Okay? This is one of the things that you want to play with. And, and on, in this accessibility area, I'm going to show you all of these. And what I encourage you to do is to go in and play with it. Turn it on, turn it up, try it out for a day or so. Eh, it's too big, it's too small. Go in and adjust it. No, if you do it on, if you do it on your phone, it's not going to do it on your iPad. You have to do them separately. These settings are all separate per device. Yes? What's a good app to test it on? Because it says only, it works on only some apps. Yeah, it only works on certain things, so it'll work like uh, in mail, I think. Does it work on the internet as well? You, you'll just have to play with it and see. You open up some different sites. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go out of here. Again, I'm going to go back to accessibility. And when you go back, you always go up here. They're pretty consistent about this, so I'm going to go back and hit accessibility. Uh, let me go, I'm going to go... I'm going to go back in there again. I might have missed something. Let me go back in the large type again. Oh, yes. This has to be on. Larger dynamic type. You'll want to have that turned on if it's not on already. If it's on, it's green. On is green. Just touch it and it'll go, it'll go back on. No, no, it doesn't go off. I, I just want to make sure you have it on. Okay? So I'm going to go back now. Now, the bold type. Uh, I have mine on bold, so yours probably, uh, well, it says bold type, and I have mine on on. Okay, if you hit that on button, it's going to say, because I'll hit it right now and turn it off, and this message comes up and it says to apply this setting, you have to restart your iPad or your iPhone. So if you want to turn on bold type right now, if you haven't had it on, you're going to have to restart your device. Bold shows up better. If you're having trouble with the thin, they went to a real thin font. And a lot of people may have trouble with that and they don't like it. Yeah. So if you don't like it and you want, you want it to be a, a more a thicker font, the way to do that is to turn on the bowl. And I have it on mine and I played with it. I had it on, I had it off, and I decided it's staying on. Now I'm not going to do this because mine's already on and I don't want to turn it off restart my iPad, so um, I'm just going to cancel this. Okay? But to turn it on, it's right here. You can do it right now if you want. Your device will just restart. You're going to be uh, missing the next couple things, but it doesn't take that long to restart. Any questions on that? Yes? restarted, and I've got bold text under larger type, but it's on. 
Yeah. You know? No, you don't hit the bold text. You don't hit anything. You don't, it, this doesn't do anything. This is what does it. If you hit that again, it'll say, "Oh, do you want to?" It'll say you're turning it off. If if this green light is on, then you've got the bold text on. Period. That's it. Touching this does nothing. Okay. Yes, sir. <coughs> No, this is an iPad, but but the iPhone 5 would be the same. But it, uh, it might not be in uh, what operating system do you have? Do you have seven or six or six? Well, some of these things are going to be a little bit different if you have six. This is all again seven. Okay. Yes, it'll stay on. Okay. But, uh, again, you've got to do each device separately. Okay. Any more questions on the on the test? Yes. What's the on off labels, please? What's what's the on off? Labels. What yeah, okay. It, if we well, turn this on, Sorry. it turns green. Yeah, okay. Okay? Okay. Now, this increased contrast, again, that'll, if I would turn that on, it increases the contrast uh, in several areas of your visibility. I have mine on. I, I can, I, trust me, I can see pretty well, but I have it on. Um, and that you can turn on right away. The reduced motion, uh, they have a couple things that will sort of float around on the screen in iOS 7. And if you don't like that, which I don't, you turn uh, reduced motion on, which reduces the motion. Okay? The final one is a cosmetic thing, and that's this on-off labels. You see this sort of one right here? It's just a cosmetic thing. If I turn this off, I'm going to touch on this and turn it off. Notice that it went away. It's strictly cosmetic. Um, it, if it's green, it's on. But if you want to see the one, you just turn that on and the one is there. And the one means what? It just means it's on. It's another indication that it's the green indicates it on, it's on, and the one indicates that it's on as well. So it's sort of, sort of one of those things like, well, I wonder why they put this in here. Yeah, sort of remember. So, the whole point is, is that if you're having some issues with visibility in iOS 7, and oh, the font isn't dark enough, it's not wide enough, and things are moving around, and the contrast isn't right, uh, play with this area. I've played with it for a long time and settled on having everything turned on. Okay? Now, there are a lot of other areas in here that I'm not going to go over, but... Um, what's that? Speed selection. Speed. Speed. Uh, it, it will. It, uh, the speak selection. Um, it, it'll actually read. It, it'll actually read things that are highlighted. If you if you hit the right buttons. It, 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 speak auto text would be the same thing. If you don't have Siri, no, it's not going to, it's not going to, yeah. Um, this whole, this whole accessibility area is rather involved. I just wanted to go over this portion of it, but if you want, if you have specific needs in this area, again, Google, Google 
iPad accessibility features. You'll get all kinds of articles that will explain this whole thing. So if you have things and, I, and you say, I want to know about all the hearing options, uh, or I want to know about the learning and the guided access, uh, Google that and you will get a wealth of information, but it's too much to cover in this session today. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, it, it, what version device? Yeah, but what uh, device do you have? Three. A three? It might not be available on the three. Okay, now, the next item. What's that? Uh, I don't have that. Uh, uh, I have it turned off. Uh, I don't use it. Again, if you want to know about all these accessibility things, it's Google that subject, and there are articles on that. Yes. Would you mind repeating the questions when you're asked? We can. For what? Would you ask questions? Would you mind repeating them? Oh, sure, sure. Yes. I'll be glad to repeat the questions. Uh, the question was, when am I going to move on? No. <laughs> uh, the, the question was uh, about this um, accessibility shortcuts. And again, I don't use the shortcuts. Don't know much about them. There are a lot of things in the accessibility area that if you want information, you need to Google the subject because it's beyond what we're going to be able to cover today. Okay? All right. Now, the next thing I want to go over is the wallpaper and the brightness. And that's right here. So here's the general, we're in the general, we're going to move down to wallpaper and brightness. Everybody see that? Everybody see where we're going now? Okay, so here we go. Now, this is what comes up, and uh, let's talk about the brightness first. This is where you set the brightness of the device. Now. Uh, I read an article on this some time ago, and they were talking about the proper way to set the brightness on your device. And what they said to do was to go in a dark room, such as a bedroom at night with no lights on or a closet, and to adjust this brightness level up and down until you were comfortable with the level of lighting in that dark room. And do that while this is off. So you would switch, switch that off by just touching it. See how it's off now? Okay, then you adjust this bar by just pulling it back and forth in the dark room, and you get it to where you want it, and then you turn this back on. And theoretically, that sets up the auto brightness function. So that when you go out in sunlight, it'll get brighter, when you go into the dark room, it'll adjust downward. Now, for me, this has been a little bit problematic. Every once in a while, I'll say, geez, my battery seems to be draining and something's not right. And one of the areas I'll go to is I'll go right into this wallpaper and brightness area and see what this is set at. And I'll see all of a sudden, oh, it's way up here. And I don't know how it got up there. I don't know how it got reset magically, but it, but it did. So I have had some difficulties with this in the past. Not recently, but I have had them. Okay? Now, there are other places where you can adjust the brightness of the screen. I'll probably show those a little bit later. But this is the key area. Okay, now what I want to do is you can touch on either one of these. I'll touch on this one right over here. And when I do that, this comes up, which gives you the choices that you can uh, use on your device. Now, if you are not using iOS 7, 
you're going to see different choices than what I'm showing. But on iOS 7, this is what you'll see. Uh, and there's a couple things I want to point out. This is the dynamic choice. If you check that dynamic choice and you have that motion thing that I went over in accessibility, if you don't have reduced motion on, what happens is, is that these bubbles float around underneath your icons on your home page. And it, it's like you look at it and you think, what's going on here? Um, the other thing is, is that it eats your batteries up to have that on. So I really never use, I tried it out, but I don't use it dynamic at all. Okay? Yes? Does that brightness eat up your battery? The brightness eats up your battery as well, yes. So if you're having battery issues, uh, one of the things to do is to try and get back a little less light on the screen. Okay, the still images that are built into the device are right here. And I'm going to go to those. The way I'm going to go to them is I'm going to just touch on this screen right there. Everybody with me? Okay? So right here. I'm going to touch on this right here. Okay? So when I touch on that, these are the ones that are built into iOS 7 that are provided by Apple. This is the one, the first one that was out there. Then they have uh, all kinds of other ones that you can choose. Okay? Those are the standard ones. You can choose any one you want. Now, I'm going to go back out to choices. So we're back out here where we started. Now the other thing you can do is you can select your own uh, screen background from your photos. These will be photos that you have on your device. So here's a lot of photos I have. And if I go in here to my camera roll, let's see. I go in here in my camera roll, I'm going to find the one that I selected. And I think it's on the other one. Yeah. Uh, go into my photo screen there. I do have a, uh, I do have a black picture that I use for my background, and it's probably in my uh, other photos. They got gazillion photos here.
So I actually changed it to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to read. I don't like that at all. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'll change that back in a few minutes, but let me get back into here.
Okay, so again, this is the where you do it, the stills that, that are built in. This is where you do the ones that, you know, if you want to uh, select one of your own photos. Okay? Okay, now. Next thing I want to talk about are the major, major changes with iOS 7 from iOS 6. And the first one that I want to talk about is search. Uh, now it used to be on the iOS 6, if you hit the home button, in that home button that I showed earlier, the indented button, if you hit it twice, it would take you to a search bar. Now, in order to search, you can do it from any screen, so I'm way out here, and if I want to search, I'm going to put my finger on this gal's face and pull down, and the search bar comes up. So is it just because you have my sketch or that my No, anyone. Oh, anyone. Anyone. Just you, you need to do it somewhere from here to here, not at the top. Not at the bottom, but somewhere in here. Okay, so I'll, I'll start, I'll do an eco beat, and I'll just pull it down. See? Okay? Now, what's, what's the purpose of the search? It will search literally everything that's on your iPad or iPhone. So if I type in my name, okay? It comes up, it comes up Merrill Lynch because I work at Merrill Lynch, but it comes up uh, in a lot of different areas. I mean, I'm in here all over the place because all these emails, in one way, they were sent to me, so they'll all come up. A gazillion things will come up for me. Um, if I cancel that and again get into search and uh, do something like, let's say I. Uh, um, Let's say I wanted to do a photo, get a photo app, and I forgot the name of it, so... Photo, and uh, uh, that didn't show an app, but let's say... Uh, let's say I wanted to get into Facebook, so I forgot where I put it. So I would just type in face... You're searching your entire device. The device that you Yes. Did you start out with your phone? Oh, so, so here, when I type in Facebook, it comes up and it says, oh yeah, here's your Facebook app. Okay. Yes. So. You, you hit the home button twice. Hit the home button twice to get the search in iOS 6. Okay, so let me give you another example. So if I if I said let's go to uh, I forgot where my music icon is. Ah, there it is, music. And where is the music? Uh, it doesn't show. Uh, it, there's no title up here, but if it has a name here. It's in my music folder. Okay? Now how do you get that music folder there? I'm going to show you that. <laughs> okay. So it says, oh, my music is in my music folder. So one of the things I can do to get to my music right away is I can just touch on the music. I'll do that. Touch on music. And it comes up. And here's, here's my music. And... And we can go to a playlist and um, and we can we can select some uh, Celine Dion. Okay. Now, oh. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, now, getting back to, it said it was in my music folder. Remember that, sir? Okay. Now, I know I have a lot of folders, and I happen to keep mine, most of them, on one page, which is right here. Okay? And I sort of organize them alphabetically. And if I go to this music one, okay, and touch on it, voila, well, there's my music. Okay? How do you create a folder? Gotta go over that. <laughs> How do you create a folder? We're gonna go over that. Sorry. Okay, everybody with me? Yes, yes ma'am. I'll show you how to go to the app. I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. Don't don't let me forget. But I want to uh, I want to go to this uh, folder business. I think soon. Let me just look here. We're going to get the. Don't let me forget about the folder thing. But I want to keep on track here. So again, one of the big changes for iOS 7 is the search, and the way you do that is from any page you're on. You just hit right in this area with your finger and start searching. Okay? Questions? Yes. How do you get them in alphabetic order? Your folder. I'm going to show you that when we go over folders. Don't let me forget. Okay, now, to get out of that search area, there's two ways to get out of it. You can hit the home button or you can just touch anywhere here. Don't touch one of these. If you touch one of these, They'll open up. So just touch in between them, which is what I want to do, and then you're out. So that's how you do search in iOS 7. Now, I want to do how you view uh, the applications that you have open and how you close them. And that's different on iOS 7 than on iOS 6. On iOS 6, you would uh, get the menu bar at the bottom with the, uh, and, and slide back and forth. Uh, but on iOS 7, what you, uh, what you do is you hit twice on the home button. Again, the home button is that indented button. Hit twice on it, and this comes up. Huh? That will not stop it. It shouldn't stop it. Well, you'd have to stop playing the rock. You'd have to stop playing. I, I'm not a Pandora user, but I mean, it would just be a music bar. It would just be on and off. <coughs> yes. Uh, hold on a minute. Yes, ma'am? Hello? Do you have a question there? No, you double click the home button. Oh, on six, uh, this won't work. This, this, on six, you do it completely different. Okay? I don't even remember how you do it on six, do you? To open up the apps at the bottom? Uh, double click is for search. Did you double click to get to it? And then the bar came up? Applications. Yeah, okay. If you double click on iOS 6, it should bring up a bar or show you your applications. But I'm telling you, I haven't worked on iOS 6 in about six months, and, and I forget them pretty quickly. Um, but does everybody know how to get to this on iOS 7? Okay, let me show you again. Well, I should, well I'll show you the applications you have open. Okay, it won't show. It won't show the ones I have open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so again, let me go to this uh, photo. Um, 
of the device. Okay? This is the home button. That's an indented button. Okay? It's the same on the phone. It's the same on the iPad. Okay? If you have iOS 7, you hit that twice, and this comes up. And this shows all the applications that you have open. The application icon is down here, and the app, actual application, exactly where you left off, is right here. Now, if you take your hand, I'm going to put my hand right here and go this way, it'll move and it'll show other ones that I have open. Okay? If I move the other way, it'll show here. I can do it up here, too. I can do it up here. I can do it up here, or I can do it down at the bottom. Okay? Now, here's how you close it. And you ought to, if you have a lot of them open, this uh, lady here said she has a lot of them open. Every once in a while, you want to just go in and close them up. Because it, because it, it, uh, it, it eats up batteries ever so slightly if you have a lot of these open. And so I have pretty many open. I mean, uh, I haven't closed mine down in a while. So, okay, here's how you close them down. You touch here and drag up. Now watch when I do that. Touch in the middle of that screen and see how I'm taking it up. And when I get it up so far, I'm like, go, poof, it's gone. Okay? You just, it's an easy touch. It's, it's not, you don't have to do it quick. You just, I'm going to touch the screen right here, anywhere in here. I'm just going to touch it, and I'm just going to pull it up. Now, I can do it fast. Here's a fast one. Okay? Sometimes if you do it fast, it doesn't work. Now, this one looks like there's nothing open, and that's because there's a blank screen open in that app. But still, I would just go like this to close that out. Everybody see that? Okay, now, here, here's a couple other things. Pay attention now. Here's a couple other things on this that I want to go over, and I'll take some questions. Hold on a minute. Um, if I want to go to the app, I just touch on it. I can touch on it here, or I can touch on it here, okay? Or I can touch on it over here. So I'll touch on the weather, the weather comes up, okay? Okay, and now the weather's updated. So now, it, I'm going to touch the home page twice, uh, home button twice again to get back to where I was, okay? Now, if you want to close so you can close one like this, okay? You can close two. Two fingers. And I'm going to put one finger on this screen, one on this one, and up they go. Okay? Now, if you want to do um, three, it gets tricky, but you can do three. Doing this class the other week, and somebody said, "Well, how do I do five? I got five fingers." I said, "I'm sorry, three at a time. That's the max. That's the max." Okay. Any questions on this? Yes. Uh, open apps will slow down the process slightly. If you have a new iPhone, if you have a new iPad. The processors are so advanced that it's not going to slow down anything. But it will, but having a lot of them open, having 40 or 50 of them open, and not cleaning this out every once in a while, will tend to drain your battery ever so slight. Not much, but it's slight. Okay. Any more questions on how to close apps? Well, now you can. All right, there you are. She said she couldn't do it, now she can. There we go. Okay, so another thing you can do, um, I'm going to go back out here. Uh, here I'm at the weather. 
And if I say, well, I want to get back to something I was doing without well, one of the searching around and reopening the app, which we started over, I want to go back to where I left off. So I would just hit that home button twice, and I get to the app that I want, and I say, um, oh yeah, the app I want is the map app. And uh, I just touch on it and it brings it right up. Okay? Right where I left off. As opposed to if I, if I closed that app out or went and started it up again, it might not be in the same place. Okay, so that's the second really big change with iOS 7, is the way you close apps and see what apps are open. Okay, the third thing is the control center. Now, the control center is right down here. You start right at the bottom of the screen and you just slide up. And when I do that, this is what comes up. Amazing, yes, it is amazing. I know of two things that are amazing in this room. That's one of them, and the other one's my wife. And if I call her out and ask her to stand up, she won't make me dinner tonight. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> she is here. She is here. Yes. She's here. That's why I've been behaving so well. <laughs> okay. Um, now, this control center is different. There are different things. If you have an iPhone, you'll see more things. And I'll show that. I'm going to hook up the iPhone in a little bit and show that. Um, I think we'll have time. But again, here's how you, here's how you go down. You just grab that little thing that right, right there. Up and down. Okay, see that? Oh, gone. Right from the bottom of the screen, up. Now, there's a couple things you can do on here. Right over here, this is your music, and it'll take you right to where you left off. I don't know if you can hear that. That's that Celine, uh, Celine Dion song that I was playing. Okay, so, and I can adjust the volume right here. Okay, I can turn it off by just hitting this, uh, which I'll do. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to lose my Wi-Fi right now, but this is airplane mode. You hit that, you be, it'll turn off the Wi-Fi. Okay? This one right here, it's hard to see, is, um, is also Wi-Fi. That's the Wi-Fi hookup. This one is Bluetooth. Uh, this one is... Uh, do not disturb. Okay, and this one is is the silence button. Uh, this one is takes you to the clock, and it takes you to the stopwatch. I don't think you care for that. And this one automatically takes to, takes you to your camera. Um, I'll show a few of these. So I'm going to go to the clock one because I want to talk about the clock for just a second. So if I hit on the stopwatch. This is what happens, the stopwatch comes up, and the reason, and, and all these are fixed, you can't change them. Probably iOS 8 next year, you'll be able to put in whatever ones are, are, are work for you. But in this version, they're all fixed. So it comes up to the stopwatch. I don't like that because when I always go to this app, 90% of the time, I want to go to the alarm area, which is right here. Uh, on my phone, I don't use it on here, but it also has, uh, in this particular app, it has a world clock right here. I want to spend a, a second on that. This is a world clock. Now, notice that the second hands are moving. Okay. If you actually look at the uh, clock thing on, icon on your on your device, you'll see now that the, the if you have iOS 7, the second hand actually moves. And I'll show that in a minute. But 
the dark indicates that it's, it's uh, nighttime over in London and so on. Uh, if we go to, and you can assign these, uh, you can hit edit and, and, and have your favorite ones here. Uh, it also shows them here on a map. And if you want the big clock, you just touch on it. So I'm going to touch on this New York. When I do that, this comes up. I rarely use this, but that's what it's for. If you touch it again uh, and hit exit right here, it'll exit back out. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to touch on New York. I will touch on London this time. We'll touch on London. Okay? See where it says exit back to the world clock up there? If I just touch the clock, that comes up. Right there. Okay? Alright. So let me get back out of there. And, uh, And I want to show you that clock real quick. I'll get to my clock. Uh, clock right here. Notice the clock. Uh, it, the second hand is moving, and it is uh, the correct time. That was one of the changes that uh, came with iOS 7. Okay, then. Um, Let's go back into this notification area. Uh, does everybody understand this? It, it, yeah, if, if you want to know what time it is somewhere else, then she said, how do I tell what time it is somewhere else? Or you go into the world clock, and you go into edit, and you add or delete items. Did you see when I hit edit? Okay? Okay? You want to change them around, move them around, you can move them around with these, these things right here. Okay? Alright, so we can get out of there and um, I want to go to the last big area of change, I think it's the last, which is the notification center. Notification center, you go to the very top up here where it has the time, and you pull down. Okay? Um, now, it's on today, which is right here, it's hard to see, but it's on today. It gives the weather. Okay? Um, it gives the there's a couple meetings. Here's today's meeting right here. It will also tell me that uh, I have a scheduled event at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Yes? The, uh, the weather is giving you, is this depending on where you, it's going to do automatically wherever you're at? Or? It usually gives the weather where you're at. If I go to New York tomorrow, it's going to, I'm going to be in New York for this. It, it should show you the weather where you're at, but you can also pull up the weather app and assign that. Uh, and I'll, 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 I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay. Now, if you're on here and you just go to all or swipe over anywhere on the screen to all, it'll show... Uh, all the things. It says I've got a text message here from one of my friends. Um, and it's got some FaceTime calls that I missed. Um, again, I've got more than one calendar. Whoops, I got out of there. So I've got more than one calendar. And uh, it shows, again, those appointments. If you go to the last item missed, I never go over there, but it'll show older things. And if you want to clear them out, like, uh, well, it doesn't allow you to clear them out of this one, but this would just show stuff that I, that's old, and I never go there. I always, I always have it up today. And I do try and look at that every morning because I have appointments and things. Yes? Did you have to uh, program the weather in there? My weather did for me. Yes. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so how do you
do you figure out what you want in there? If you go here to settings, settings, and we're going to go to this notification, uh, notification center, control center, and do not disturb. Uh, first, I'm going to go to control center, which is the middle one. Okay? And it's very simple. You just make sure those are on, and I think they're on by default. Okay? And it just it just means that if my if my device is locked, I can still swipe up and see those items. Okay? Everybody got that? Good. Okay, now if I go to the notification center, which Dennis is what you were asking about. This is where you turn on those things. So in the day view, I have on show me a summary. I have on show me the cal my calendar stuff. Show me any reminders that I have, and show me a tomorrow summary. Um, now, if your weather still is not showing, then it has to be turned on. In the uh, in another area, what that I'll get to in just a minute. Okay, and so uh, and then also, if you want to be able to get to that notification area while your device is locked, you have to have these on. Okay. Uh, at the bottom, it's got all all my apps. Uh, you can see I have quite a few, um, and if you go to any of these area arrows, like let's go to messages. That's a good one because everybody has uh, everybody. A lot of people have text messages. Um, this is where you set up what you want your text messages to do. So when I get a text message, I, will, I just want a banner. It just briefly appears at the top of my screen and disappears. If you want it to appear in the middle, you can put it right here. Um, I also want an icon, and an icon will tell me that when I look at my message icon on the front page, it'll say, oh, you, you've got five text messages you haven't looked at. Uh, the sound I choose is a choo-choo. Um, and I want it to show my messages in the notification center. So if you want them in your notification center, you got to have this on. Okay? And I only want the last five. So if we get out of here, go back out, and I go to, let's go to this weather one. Weather, show a notification center. So that would be, you'd have to have that on, does it? Well, this is a weather app that I have, which is the weather, uh, this is the weather channel app. It's, a, it's one that I downloaded. Okay? Now you might have a different weather one. There's probably um, a couple other weather ones in here that I don't have on. That's the weather one that I have on. You might have a different weather one, but you have to have it on. If it's not on, it'll appear down here. Not included. Now, if you go in here, and I go into, uh, I'll go into, uh, well, here's a, here's a calendar. I've already got a couple calendars. Here, here's, here's Facebook. So I can go Facebook. It's not included, but uh, if I want a banner alert, I've got none right now. I could change it to banner. Uh, I do have this on, so it does show me if I look at my icon how many Facebook alerts are out there. But I don't have, them, have it on. I just don't want to be bothered with it. So I'll turn it off.
Questions on this? How do you get it into do not include? Uh, okay, how do you get it into do not include? So if you go out here, let me just take one that I want to do not include. Let's say that uh, this PDF printer, and I don't want to include it, I put right here none. Watch what happens. None. Okay? And uh, then I don't want it here, and I don't need it here. Now when I go back out, notice that it's at the top of the list of do not include. It changed. Okay? Everybody got that? How do you include one? Well, let's go in and include that one. So, go in here. I said, oh, I do want PFD. All I really do is change this to uh, the banner. And that should have been enough to include it. No, nope, that wasn't. I have to turn on this right here. Alerts. Now when I go back out, it's there. It went from here to here. Okay? Yes? It's not who got the question. It's not sure who got it. How do you get it to include it? It could be that um, it's not on in the privacy area. And I will go over that. Hold on a minute. I want to make sure we're on that here. Okay. Uh, okay, you wanted to know again? Uh, okay, so let's go to this privacy area right here. You go to privacy right here. There's general, go to privacy. And this location services is an important area. And um, you would want your weather generally in there. Let me just see what my weather is. Yes. My weather is right here and it's on. So it knows where my weather is. You know, the general said I'm going to New York tomorrow. It'll know where the weather is for a half when I get off the plane. I'm seeing the same on my screen and shows on, but we're not seeing it in the notification. What version do you have? Could have to something to do with being on six. Yes. When we get our weather icon. Yes. Um, is it, which weather icon is it? PWC. Uh, what, you, what you might, you might have a buggy uh, version of it, and the thing to do would be to delete it and re-download it. You can do that for free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you might have to be on the internet, uh, and you might have to be on the internet to do that. Uh, but I'll show you, I'll show you how to delete an item. Oh, you're kind of doing that here. Yes. Um, but if you want to delete a, um, an item, I keep all my old items sort of over here. So, let's say I want to delete uh, the Wall Street Journal because I have it somewhere else in here. So, I'm, I'm going to hold my finger, you can hold your finger on any of these and they'll start to shake. Okay, and an X appears. If an X does not appear, it's because it's a native app that came with the device from Apple and they can't be deleted. An example of that would be notes, or messages, or photos. Okay? Um, so, let me get the one. Um, like here, Game Center. Notice there's no X. It can't be, it can't be removed. Yes?
you're, you're having a hard time moving from screen to screen? Yes. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over all, all that in just, just one second. Okay, so you got these squiggling and I want to get rid of the Wall Street Journal. I just hit on the X. I'm going to hit on this X right here. And it'll say delete the Wall Street Journal and I want to delete it. Now what I would suggest you do if you're having buggy problems with that weather app is to delete it and then go to the App Store and re-download it. And somebody asked earlier about how you go to the App Store and I'm going to show that now. So to get these things from stopping the jiggle, oh yeah, okay, while I've got them, yeah, while I've got them jiggling, I'll show you how to move them. So let's say that I want to move this one, and I want to move it over to here. I just grab it, and I just take it across, take it across, and then it goes. And sometimes it's a little more difficult to do, but uh, I haven't had any problems lately. You, doing. you keep holding it until it's on the next screen. And when you and when you want to stop, you let up. So if I take it and move it, if I don't, if I want to stop, I just bring it back real quick. If I keep it over here. If I keep it over here, it'll keep going to the last page. It'll create a new last page, as a matter of fact. If you want to delete it, hit the X. Okay? Now, uh, while I'm on here, uh, somebody asked about how you create folders. Okay, so. When they're jiggling, they got to be jiggling. So again, the way you get them to jiggle, you hit the whole button and it stops. The way you get it to jiggle is you just hold your finger on any app. So I hold it on there, okay? Now, to make a file, I'm going to take this one and put it on top of this one. And watch what happens. Okay? And it says social. And I don't like that name, so I'm going to go right up here and I'm going to touch right up here. And when I touch social, the keyboard comes up. Okay? And then what I do is I back up like this and I just put test. Ah, I like that name. Now I'm done. So I hit done right here to get rid of the keyboard if I want to. And I just hit anywhere on the screen, and it'll come back out, and it'll show the folder that I just created. Now I want to put some more in there. So I'm going to put this one in there. Oops, I'm going to put this one in here. Come on. There. I'll put this one in there. I got four of them in there. Okay? I'm going to get to that. <laughs> You're always a step ahead of me. I like this group. Okay, so now somebody asked, they said, well, how do you, how do you get them? I'm going to skip, go back over here now to work. I keep most of mine. How do you get them in alphabetic order? You have to do that manually. So if I had, if I had Game Center, if I take Game Center and move it up here, and I look at that and I say, oh, what's Game Center doing up there? It should be down here in the G's. I have to just grab it and take it down here. Okay? So, um, or games cards. Uh, so if you have a lot of folders, I mean, I sat down and it took me, I, I like to work on this stuff when I'm on an airplane. You can tell my wife I'm the most worn passenger in the world. Uh, and I, uh, I will sit there and I'll do things like organize these folders and get everything where I want it. And if you get it where you want it here, that doesn't make it that way on your iPhone. It's completely separate. Okay? Now, I'm going to go back out here. I'm switching out to this last page. 
and how do you get them out of it? So I'm going to go into this one, and I'm, they're still jiggling. I'll stop the jiggling. Okay. You hit the home button to stop the jiggling. Always hit the home button to stop the jiggling. Now I'm going to touch on that one again, this one right here. I can touch on this one if I want to do this one. And they'll start to jiggle. Once it starts to jiggle, I touch on that one. This one right here. Now unfortunately, you have to do these one at a time to get them out of it. So I'll take and I'll say, well, I'm going to take this one out. I don't want it in there. Okay? So now I'm going to go back in. Oh, I don't want this one in there either. Now I'm going to go back in. Oh, I don't want this one in there either. Then I go back in here. Oh, I don't want that one in there either. Now when I take this one out, the folder disappears. It's gone. Okay? Now I can say, well, you know, the way I really had these is I had... Um, I had this down here, and those two up there, and this over here. I don't know how I have, but that's how you that's how you do folders. Questions on folders? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I want to go over. Okay. Yeah. He's going to show you right there. Okay. So, now, the next thing I want to go over is I want to go into the settings area again. And I'll show everybody something that they probably won't like, but it's necessary. Uh, if you go down to the bottom here, in general, or in general, go down here to the bottom and this I want to talk about this auto lock and password. Uh, it's password settings. Now, the auto lock, you can have it set at 2, 5, 10, 15 minutes, or never. The auto lock means that if I go sit out in that chair in 15 minutes, my screen will go blank. It'll go off. Okay? Uh, now, you got to remember that 15 minutes is long for me. I did, ha I did have it on 10 before, but uh, uh, we could actually change it to 10 right now. Just click on 10. But it eats up battery. So if you're sitting there working on your iPhone or your iPad and you don't turn it off, hit the button to turn it off, uh, and the button is that start button, that little small button. I'm going to hit it once right now. See, so if I hit the if I hit that button, it, the screen goes black. Now that saves my battery. And if I want to go back on, I hit that button again, and it will bring me right to here. Okay, and for me, it's going to take me right back here. Okay? So that's what the auto lock means on the screen setting. The other important one is the passcode lock, and that's the more important, I think, of the two, and that's the one that some people won't like. But it's important to have a password, even if it's a simple four-digit passcode, because you have things, most people have things on their phone or on their iPad that if somebody picks it up and it's not locked, forget about stealing your device, they're going to steal your information. They're going to get in, they can get into your contacts, they can get into all kinds of things on that device that you would rather not have them get into, I'm sure. Uh, so, the passcode lock, I have mine on 15 minutes. If I'm traveling, I usually set it to immediate or five minutes. I mean, traveling as in airports. Uh, the 15 minutes, I find satisfactory. Now, um, you can change that. To change it, you got to put in your code. Uh, if you don't have a code, it'll, it'll, it'll prompt you to enter a code. So you can enter like one, two, three, four. Uh, and where you change that is right here. 
require password 15 minutes. Uh, you can change that to immediate. One minute, five minutes, 15, one hour, four hours. Now, I just, I just got my wife to start doing a passcode and to be nice and kind to her, I have her set at four hours right now. Um, so that she can be in the house where she mostly uses her device and she can be away from her device for four hours and not have to enter a passcode until after four hours. So if it, if it really bugs you, set it at a higher level. But just remember, if you're out at the grocery store or something and somebody grabs your device, uh, they can play with it for a, a long time. And as long as they're playing with it, that, clock, that four hour clock does not start ticking until it's not been disturbed for four hours. It's very important to have a passcode. It's, it's set up to do a simple one. I, I had a four digit passcode for three, two or three years. And then I changed it recently to a seven digit code. Uh, I have a lot of sensitive stuff on my device that I just don't want people to get to get at. So that you, the way you set up the code is right here. Turn the code on, turn the code off, um, right at the top. So if I go into here, turn code off, I actually have to. Uh, uh, it, it'll give me some warnings here, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to cancel that. Change the code. It'll say enter your existing code, and uh, then I can change it. I'm going to cancel that. Um, notice that right here, uh, yours probably has a light on that says simple code, which is a four-digit code. Mine, the light is not on because I set up a seven digit code. I could have set up 15 digit, I could have set up five, but anything more than four numbers is, you have to turn this box off and do it. Now, one other important setting here is this one, which by default is on. So you probably have a green light there. And that means that if your, your device is locked with a passcode, somebody can still hit the home button and use Siri. And guess what they can do? They say, Siri, tell me where I live. Now whoever's got your phone knows where to go to rob your house. Okay? So I turn that off, which, which Siri off means that when your phone is locked with a passcode, that you cannot use Siri. I would have to enter my passcode and have my device unlocked before I could use Siri. Make sense? Questions on that? Where do you find Siri on the iPhone? On the iPhone, it should be right here in this passcode area. Uh, again, here's where we're at. We're in general, and we're in passcode lock. Okay? You have to enter your passcode or enter a number in there to get in. When I enter my number to get in, the Siri is right here. You find it? No, if you don't have Siri, you're not going to find it. If you don't have Siri because it's on your phone, then it won't be there. No, if you have like, what do you have? A four? Yes. A four doesn't have Siri, so you're you wouldn't see it. Okay. iPhone four does not have Siri, so you wouldn't see that setting. You should see it. No, five S used to see it. Okay, George is going to come over. He likes to. He likes to help all the women here. I noticed that. About it. <laughs> yes, ma'am.
Yeah. And it says, allow active message for mom. And I have Siri, Haskell, and reply with the message. What do those I turn it off Siri. Okay. I'll, I'll have to get on the phone to do that, and I'll, I'm about ready to do that anyhow. So let me switch to the phone. And I'll show you some phone specific things. So let's change gears here for a minute. Well, George, I don't think this thing likes me. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now we have the phone. Up and going. This is an iPhone, uh, and this is a 5S, 5S five, uh, phone. So I'm going to show you a couple things. Remember, I I said in the in the notification center that I wanted a banner to show me how many text messages I haven't read. There's two of them I haven't read. Okay, the 13 here indicates today is the 13th. Three here indicates that there's three appointments on that calendar. These calendars are different. Um, Starbucks, there's three messages. They give you like a free song every other day. And, um, but let's go to that settings area. Again, it's the same thing. The settings I have it. I have it down here. And if I go into there and go into the General area. Yes, I'm on the phone. And I'm going to go into um, the general area. General, general, general. There we go. And go back down. Notice the same things are here. There's the accessibility. We went over that earlier. About your phone, software updates. It's all the same. A lot of it's the same. Now, Auto lock, I have three minutes on my phone. Um, this touch ID and passcode, I'm going to hit on that because I have the touch ID for this particular phone, but it'll take my password. It says any of your passcode, so I'm entering my passcode. Okay, now this is what you were seeing on your phone. So what this says is series off on the phone's lock. Passwords off, but reply to a text message is on. So if my phone is locked and I get to a, and I get a text message, I don't have to unlock it. I can just hit the text message and reply. Okay, it's up to you whether you want that on or off. Uh, erase data. This is something that always did scare me, particularly if you got little munchkins running around, uh, because if somebody tries to input your passcode 10 times in a row and fails, it will erase your data, which is sort of spooky. But if you're backing up, which I'm going to go over next, uh, that's not a problem at all. So I leave that on. Okay. Uh, general, and on mine it says touch Touch ID and passcodes. I'm mean, usually might just say passcodes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it'll ask you to put in your passcode. If you don't have one set up, it'll ask you still to put in one, put in one, two, three, four, or whatever you want to get in. Okay, are you, are you still have problems? That's it, passcode. Yeah, you've got a passcode right there. That's it. It comes up and it asks for your passcode. Um, if you put your passcode, you got to put your passcode in every time you get into those settings. Okay? So let me, let me go out one more time and show this again. I'm going to go out of here. 
every time you, yours is either going to say passcode or touch ID and passcode, depending on what phone you have. When you hit on that, it automatically will ask you for your passcode to get into it, even if your phone's unlocked, which my phone's unlocked. So I put my passcode in again, and then I'm in there. Okay, then at the bottom, on a phone, you have some more options. On the iPad, it just says Siri on and off, uh, and it probably has the erase data. But on the, on the phone, it has passbook on or off, and reply to text messages. Now this passbook is where you can put things, like you can put your, your Starbucks card, uh, all that, you, you wouldn't on that phone. Uh, on a on a later phone you would have it, um, but um, I have it off, and the reason I have it off is I don't want somebody to be able to pick up my phone and get into my passcodes and start spending all my Starbucks money. Passbook should be on. Off. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't use Passbook, it just means you can't use it when your phone's locked and you have a, a, a code to get in. Okay. Could you go over the erase data one more time, please? Erase data is this right here. And it says, erase all data on this iPhone after 10 failed passcode attempts. Okay? Data protection is enabled, which means I have um, my stuff backed up in the cloud. So if somebody picks up my phone, tries to get in more than 10 times, it's going to erase the phone. Now, since I have it backed up, I can restore everything if I get a, have to buy a new phone or somebody returns that phone to me. Uh, you can restore it actually from a new phone uh, by putting in your Apple ID and your cloud ID and so on. It's a little... You can the same thing. Yeah. Are you able to uh, disable the required password immediately? Scroll down just a second and... Yes. Okay. If you, if you have this set to... Um, Require passcode immediately. Oh, you can't change it if you have the fingerprint ID. Let me talk about the fingerprint ID. How many people have the fingerprint phone? Just a few? Okay. So I'll mention this just quickly. Uh, the fingerprint's sort of nice. Uh, I, sometimes it doesn't work as well as I thought it would, but uh, I, you can go in and erase all the fingerprints you have in there and redo it. And one of the things that they'll tell you in a few articles that I read on this is that when, you, when you're when you setting up your fingerprint, to just do it lightly. People have a tendency they want to mash their finger in. But when they mash their finger in, guess what? It, it sort of spreads out your fingerprint. So you just touch lightly and touch different ways. Touch all up, upside down. Touch every way there is to touch. And that's the best thing to do. Um, I think I have my two thumbs and my index finger. This thumb seems to work the best, and that's the one I use all the time. Maybe that's why I'm used to it. But if it doesn't work five times in a row, it requires you to put in your manual passcode. And you must have a manual passcode set up to use the fingerprint ID. And a lot of people get concerned about that. But what's the purpose of that? Because somebody can just go back, back, back five times and then they can put your device on, a, on some supercomputer and crack your code. I don't care if it's 10 digits long. Um, you probably still have time to go home and erase all your data if somebody stole your phone before they did that, unless they were a real professional. But, but it's a safeguard. It's a safeguard so that you can get in your phone. The other time you need it is uh, if you have not used your phone or unlocked it for 24 hours, it will require you to do it. If you uh, do a hard restart, 
And I should mention what a hard restart is. A hard restart is, is that you hold down the on-off button, which is that small button uh, uh, on the uh, it's on the side of the uh, or it's on the uh, top of the iPhone. If I hold that down and it'll turn my phone off like that, turn it on again like there, okay? And uh, oh, oh, wait a minute, we gotta go back to that. There's my truly amazing wife. <laughs> and she is amazing. Okay, so if I go into here, um, what was I what was I wanted to talk about? Uh, I realized talking about my amazing wife and it distracted me. Oh, the hard, the hard restart. So the hard restart is you hold down that top button and you hold down the home button at the same time. Now, and you hold them down until the screen turns black and the apple appears. Sometimes it takes 15 or 20 seconds. Sometimes it can take a minute. Once the apple appears, you let up on both buttons and your phone, your phone or your iPad will restart and that resets a lot of things. So if you're having a problem, even like with an app or an app's not downloading or something's going on crazy on your phone, the first thing to do is, is that hard reset. Hard reset. Hold down the home button and the, and the uh, start button at the same time, simultaneously until the screen turns black. If you do it real quick, you take a picture of the screen. So let me show you that real quick. So if I just go like this, and you'll see the screen flash. You see that flash? Okay, now if I go to my photos, we're gonna say, call you later, okay. If I go to my photos, you'll see that photo that I just took, right there the screen. Okay? Yes. 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 Right, it should. Well, then there's two messages that, that... Well, I will have to talk to you after this session. In just a few minutes, if you can stick around. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to uh, quickly go over that, and it's the same on both devices. If you go into settings, okay, and go back out, and you're out here in the favorite screen where you've got Do Not Disturb in general, and you go on down, and you'll see this iCloud. iCloud, right here. You need to go into iCloud. You should have an iCloud account set up. Okay? If you have the same account set up on both of your, your iPad and your iPhone, then they will talk to each other, they say it, they'll uh, uh, mail and everything we say. Now, if you go down, notice I have all these things on because I want them to sync. And if you go down to the bottom, you have to have this on, find my, uh, you want to make sure you have find my phone on because if you don't have find my phone on, you lose the phone, uh, you can't go to a computer and locate where it's at. I actually left my phone one time up at Publix. Went home, a couple hours later, discovered it was gone, some great Samaritan then turned it into lost and found, but I was able to go to my computer at home and said, oh, there it is at Publix. Uh, but the backup and storage is right here. So if you go to that area, I have iCloud backup is on. They give you free five gigabytes of storage. Now I have more than that, 
because I'm a, a, a computer geek. So I've got 25 gigabytes of storage. I bought 20 extra, and I have about 10 still available. Uh, if you go to this managed storage area real quickly, it'll tell you that I have uh, most of it on my iPhone and some of it on my iPad. Does anybody know why I would have more backup storage uh, on my uh, on my iPhone? Movies. Movies. You take movies. You take movies of your grandkids. You take movies of your pets. You take movies of your friends. And you transfer them to your computer, and guess what you do? You forget to delete them from your phone. And it eats up your storage area, and it eats up your backup space as well. Okay?